it's early in the morning and I got a busy day planned for today I just wanted to try to do this garden update and show you what's going on let's get to it the corn that I started indoors and then transplanted out here was doing fine until I don't know if it's a bird or uh, cut worms or what but a couple of them were just laying on the ground and then one of them was pulled completely up so I've uh, replanted seeds to replace the ones that got pulled up and the glass gem corn right here is already starting to come up so it'll be a little behind the other ones then we have uh, two rows of onions there and some lettuce and next to the corn I'm going to be planting some squash and of course some beans have that three sisters and then in this grow bag here I've got a couple of tomatoes then we've got a few eggplants out and then some just really making holes in them but they're starting to back off a little so that's good then we got some mixed lettuce here the lettuce I planted way too late but we had some weird weather uh, we had 20 degree uh, temperatures and April and now we've shot up to 90 in, in May and 80s for the foreseeable future so that's just the way it goes sometimes but I've got peppers here I've been putting out a few of my uh, starts every once in a while and uh, we have spinach here I finally got around to thinning the spinach and the radishes but I haven't gotten around to the lettuce yet we've got a few more peppers and we've got the pineapple I stuck it in the ground I don't know if that's good or bad but that's what I did then we have a bunch of carrots I still need to thin those out got three rows of those I have four different types of carrots now and I've got some yakon planted out I might be moving a couple of those I'm not sure I'm still thinking about it got trellis set up for some beans and while I'm talking about trellises that trellis down here I have a pepino melon and a couple of passion flowers then I'm conditioning these these two straw bales here I've got those are my grafted tomatoes those five and they're really starting to take off it's pretty much perfect growing weather for tomatoes 80s during the day and 60s at night and we have uh, onions between the rows of tomatoes uh, the five grafted ones I got mixed up because uh, I dropped them lost the tags but uh, over here we have a Aunt Ruby's German Green no I take that back the Aunt Ruby's German Green is here and over here is the white Tomasell I'm going to compare those to uh, two grafted plants of the same type then I bought a black cram but it's not doing too well I don't know why the uh, tomatillos they're just now starting to grow And here's that petunia in the hollow log. It's doing really well. Over here we have the straw bales. I got a couple of tomatoes in that one. Those are determinant types. I'm hoping I won't have to support them, but I might have to. We'll see how that goes. Then those areas in that one I'm going to be planting in the side I'm going to be planting nasturtiums then on this uh, straw bale I have eggplants and one pepper in the middle and then petunias coming out the side you can see the petunias starting to bloom or one of them is then the mushrooms really pop out in the morning Uh, the spinach 
I've taken it out except for some on the end. Uh, you can see the spinach bolted. It's just been so hot here. I mean, for this time of year. Uh, normally it should probably be in the 70s, but we've been in the upper 80s. Hit 90 one day. Then I have a couple of grafted uh, tomatoes over here. Then another single tomato there. I'll cover them more in another video, I think. Then I'm doing a little experiment on the Yakon, trying to cover it up to protect it from stem borers. I have uh, some Yukon Gold potatoes here and some Kennebec right next to that. And the garlic is really doing well. It's getting really tall. The sunflowers are really growing. Uh, the okra is starting to come up down on the other end. That horseradish, <laughs> that may end up being like the raspberries. It's trying to take over this end of the garden. Then we have some Okinawan purple sweet potatoes and some yellow Jersey sweet potatoes. There's the little banana tree. It hasn't done much lately, but I'm hoping it'll take off soon. I hear the Oreo. Well, there's one over there getting, well, they just flew off. I was going to show them to you. Yeah, I have some Swiss chard coming up with some weeds and some dill over here. The dill would have really been thick, but I put some more wood chips down here to slow some of the weeds. And This end down here is uh, pretty much fully decomposed, so the weeds are starting to show up, and so I'm adding more wood chips. And there's a garden helper I don't really need, but he likes to come over and annoy me sometimes. We've got some common chives here, some little lavender plants over here, more chives. The rhubarb is really doing well. It's probably, well, between, it's over knee high. And there's the size of the leaves. They're huge. The sage is trying to go to seed. I'm going to cut that top of that off. Got some variegated oregano. Then we had some fennel coming up down here along with some more weeds. Some more oregano over here. Uh, we got some elephant garlic there. Some kale. Things are really starting to grow. Like I mentioned, it was it's perfect weather for some things, and then for other things like uh, this cilantro there, it's starting to bolt. Any of the early spring stuff is going to bolt really quickly. But overall, things are looking really well. They're looking good. Down here, I have another unusual flower container. That's just an old water cooler that was destined for the dump and we turned it into a petunia pot. Speaking of petunias, let's look at one more. I stuck a couple of wave petunias in this uh, old, old wash tub and they're really starting to take off. I'm thinking by the end of the summer they're going to be on the ground. What I like to do uh, with my columbine seed, I save a bunch of it and then in the fall I just kind of throw it out and scatter it. And this popped up from my efforts there. And I thought it was kind of pretty and unusual. The irises around here are starting to bloom. This is one of uh, the irises we got from my sister-in-law's place. She passed away a few years back. But these are kind of an old-fashioned one, and they remind us of her every time this we see them. This is a purple iris I created by cross-pollinating a couple. And here's me and Joshua's common milkweed. It's 
really doing well this year as you would expect over here next to the straw bales I have some zinnias planted and those are kind of a special project I had an unusual color so I saved all of these are from one flower so I'm hoping to maybe learn a little bit about the genetics I forgot to mention I'm also growing some Florida green cotton this year and before anybody asks, I have absolutely no practical uses for the cotton. I just think it's an interesting plant. So I thought I'd grow one a little bit different. Last year I grew the red foliated. That's a look at what we have going on right now. Things are really starting to come together and the weather, like I mentioned, is really good for growing. But I'll do some more updates and give a few more details about some of the things that I didn't want to take time to talk about during this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. That way you can follow along and see how we do things. See if it works or see if it doesn't. We'll see you next time.